Hey everybody, this is Andrew Greer with CCM Magazine. I'm here with my good friend, Sonia Isaacs. Oh, Sonia Isaacs, Yuri. I just, Aww. I love you so much, you know that. I love you too. And I love what you do, and I love how you put, literally, to know Sonia is to know her music, and I think to know your family, the Isaacs, is to know your music. But I wanted to, since we're sitting down with you, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of your efforts outside of just gospel music, because you have written songs for Martina McBride. I remember when you came into the session with me, you were on your way to a session with like Dirk Bentley or something, yeah, you yeah, know, that record. kind of thing. Yeah. So tell me about how music as a Nashville musician and how that generates and how that kind of fashions what you do as a family, what you do in gospel music, and how, how do you carry all that part of you, you know, through each kind of section of who Sonia Isaacs well, is. Well, I, um, I had a country deal in around 2000. I um, actually did two albums, and I learned to write, really learned to write country music when I was doing that. They put you with some of the best writers <laughs> when you're like this green, nobody, new artist, and they want you to write hit songs. And um, so they so they um, put me with great writers, and I learned how to write country songs. And, you know, through my country deal, I had a, a lot of opportunities to meet and to, to become friends and to sing with, with country artists. And so along the way, um, made some French friends along the way as well, and never dreamed that I would start getting my songs cut in country <laughs> music, um, as well as gospel and other genres of progress and stuff like that too, but, um, but yeah, Trisha Yearwood has cut my song, Leanne Rhymes, uh, Martina McBride, that's probably the biggest one in country that I had was the song I'm Gonna Love You Through It about her mom's story about breast cancer, and uh, that, that song has been a huge blessing, you know, she started Team Martina because of that song, and still to this day, even though it's been five years ago, they still do great things for cancer patients every day, and so that's like, you know, makes you feel like, oh, I did something worthwhile. Yeah. And um, but you know, just other artists, Vince Gill, and yeah. and on and on. And um, so you know, but but that has also opened other doors for my family to be able to sing with country artists. Like we were just on Merle Haggard's tribute uh, taping. That was a really neat honor. I mean, Merle Haggard, people. Right. <laughs> Merle Haggard, be Merle. Uh, but you know, just so some you know some great opportunities that have come along, and I just love writing all different kinds of music. And uh, writing is a great because you get to share your heart you know I mean you can be transparent on paper even if nobody ever hears it it's a healing yeah. process and so it's a beautiful thing it's a therapeutic thing and you know when you talk about the song that y'all wrote for Martina that you also record as the Isaacs I'm gonna love you through it right and you talk about how that still is making waves uh, as far as impacting people who've experienced cancer in their families talk about music as a real motivator as a medium that really motivates us to think about others to love others yeah. better to love ourselves better love God other uh, God better so how have you seen music Music be a motivator uh, and move in your own life, in your own spiritual circumstances or family circumstances? Well, I mean, it's no secret that music can completely change the atmosphere of a room. Um, you know, whether it's standing by the bedside of a dying saint, or um, or being in the, a church service, or you know, or, or breaking out into a hymn in the middle of a bar. I mean, you know, it, music is so powerful, and it can have a negative impact as well. It's very powerful. Uh, music can be powerful negatively as well. Um, but you know, but but songs. Um, like I said, they're very healing, not just to write them, but to be able to to share a healing experience. For example, we have a new album out, and we wrote 14 of the 15 songs on it, and the 15th song is is the uh, hymn, Great Is Thy Faithfulness, that Terry Bradshaw sings on with us. He's the executive <laughs> producer of the NFL. Terry Bradshaw is the NFL, executive producer uh, yes, of the Hall Isaac's of new record. Because yes. Yeah, that's, uh, that's how it a works. long story. Um, but but uh, but we wrote 14 of these songs, and they, every like the the subtitle the album's called Nature Symphony in 432. The subtitle is called A Journey from Pain to Praise because all of these songs we've written the last couple years, you know how they say when it rains it pours sometimes, and it has just poured on our family like one thing after another for each of our personal lives and collectively we've just been like through the mill the last two years. But God used that to to um, give us songs of healing and songs and testimonies where we can be transparent. My story um, two years ago in 2014, I was six months pregnant with our second child, a little girl, and I had a stillborn baby and. It was devastating. Um, one week later, I wrote one of the songs that's on the album called "Keep Breathing," and and it simply says, "When you can't do, and you can't even get out of bed, when you don't have the will, you just just keep breathing, and God will give you the strength. And you know, just keep praying and keep trying and keep rising. And you know, eventually the clouds will part, and waking up gets less hard. It doesn't ever get easy, but right. you know." Mm -hmm. 
Um, but, but that song, and I've already gotten to experience how that song is touching people's lives. And, and then about three months later, we wrote a song called I Love You More with Kenna West that has become my anthem, and I sing it on stage every night. And I tell about losing Ava, my baby. And, you know, and then I, at the end, I bring out my 10-month-old Gatlin, who we had, we got pregnant with six months after we lost her. And he's just a healthy big baby boy. And, you know, we just talk about God's faithfulness, and, and it's so healing. And I get people coming up to me every night at the concerts, four and five, sometimes more. And, and I know not all of them come up to me, but just say, we went through that, or we lost a baby, we never talked about it. or And so it helps people to, to be transparent with their feelings when you're transparent with yours. And so that's one of the most beautiful yes, things yes. about what we get to do. Um, so it's just been a, a healing yeah. process. And I just found out I'm having a, another baby in <laughs> April. Yes. A boy? A girl. A girl. Well, Andrew makes a great name for boys and girls. So it's, it's just a thing. <laughs> boys and girls. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Andy. Exactly. Well, listen, I am thankful for you guys. I'm thankful for your heart. I'm thankful Me for too. you contributing to not just gospel music, to put music and people as a whole. It means the world to us. It has and will continue to. So. Thank you. And thank I'm a you. big fan of yours yeah, as well. I love no, no, you. No, I'll take it. So thank you guys. Thank you.